Good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing, and I am already glad in it. I pray, I pray that you are excited about the word of the Lord this morning. I pray that you are excited about the season that we're in and what God is doing. If you have not already, thank you, Jackie Talbert. Thank you, Sheila Talbert, for sharing. If you have not already, I need you to at least share this with at least five people Tag this on your page. Help me to get the word of the Lord out. I am so excited about what the Lord is going to speak to us on this morning. Listen, if you were not with us on Good Friday, my God, my God, we had a time in the Lord. Listen, the Lord met us there and he did what he always does. He showed up and he showed out. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you that took time out of your schedules to be with us on Good Friday. It was a high time in the Lord. We were shifted into another place with him. So I am so excited. I feel so honored, so blessed. Listen, to just host the presence of the Lord. Listen, it is an honor to do the work of the Lord. I pray, I pray that you are excited about what God is just simply doing in this season. He already spoke to me um, over the, because I was on spring break and listen, I relaxed. Your girl got some good rest this whole spring break. I um, didn't travel this time. This is the first time in years I didn't travel on spring break. I just really rested in the Lord. I, I, um, did Good Friday. We had Good Friday did that. So that whole weekend, I was super, super busy, but it was a good busy. I was busy with my family. So me and my family, my brothers, my mom, my girls, we spent three days together. We spent Good Friday, that Saturday, that Sunday. So I, that would that just bless me. And then the rest of the break, listen, Monday through that Monday, all the way through Sunday, I rest. I didn't travel because what I'm learning is you, you have to learn to, to use wisdom and listen to what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you. So normally y'all know during spring break, I'm either on a cruise or I'm with my grandbabies, one or the other, been doing it for years. But this year, God said, I need you to rest. And so after I was resting and I was so excited because I rested and I was sleeping like nine hours every night. I was so excited about that. But God began to tell me, he says, daughter, I need you to rest now because you're about to get busy. And I said, oh, Father Jesus, <laughs> because I feel like, I feel like I'm already busy. I, if you know me, then you know I'm constantly planning. I'm constantly asking the Lord, what is it that you want me to do next? What is it that you have me to do for the kingdom? So I'm always doing something. I'm always working on something. If I'm not writing books, I'm editing books. If I'm not preaching, I'm, I'm preparing to preach. I'm always doing something. So the Lord told me, he said, I need you to rest because daughter, you are about to get busy. So I need you all to, to start to listen to what the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Don't just, oh, well, child, it's just, I got, I can rest later. I can, and you know how people say I can sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. And then there's no work to be, no more work to be done. Listen, so you have to listen to the spirit of the Lord. When he says rest, that mean rest. When he say go, that mean go. When he say no, <laughs> <laughs> that means no. So, so I'm excited about what the Lord is getting ready to do in this next season of my life. Um, learning to listen to him, learning to rest when he say rest. Listen, so, so I wanted to get into this word that the Lord gave me because many of you know, we were on the, the 30, 30, 30 challenge. And so we, we fast for 30 days. Um, well, I was fasting for 30 days, but the 30, 30 challenge was you're going to pray for 30 minutes a day in the spirit. You're going to pray for 30 minutes in the natural, and then you're going to study your word for 30 minutes. So I did that for, um, 30 days. Many of you did it with me. You saw the results. You saw the miracles. If you know me, anytime God's get, God gives me anything to say concerning fasting, consecrating, it is from the Lord. I just don't do it just to be doing it to sound super deep. He's, he's about to um, do something in your life whenever I call these these types of challenges or whatever God give me. So I did that. And, and then as I came out of it, many of y'all know I love to eat. So I was like, I'm going to have some carrot cake. I'm going to have some red velvet. I'm going to have some German. So every day I was like just having a piece of cake because I love sweets. And, and I had kind of got out of all the habits that I had got in. In the 30 days, I kind of got really relaxed because I was on spring break. So I got really relaxed. I was just chilling and doing what I do. And so the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, so now that the challenge is over, 
you, you've you kind of gotten real lax when it comes to the things of God. Not to say that I was out there doing nothing. So don't get it twisted. I wasn't out there doing nothing super crazy. I just got real relaxed in where I was because I said, we're over the challenge now and I'm not fasting. I'm not in the season of consecration, so I can just do whatever. And God reminded me, he says, daughter, I need you to dwell. This is going to bless y'all. I need you to dwell there. And I begin to say, dwell where? Like what? And so the first scripture, of course, I came to is he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God and shall abide under the shadow. So I begin to think about that and God began to deal with me. He says, Lord, he says, when I call you to a lifestyle, listen to this, a lifestyle of consecration, you can't have moments when you get lax. You can't have moments when you get what you want because understand, understand, understand. Listen to me carefully. This is a season of manifestation. God is pouring out like never before. To his sons and daughters, to those that were obedient in what he said. He said, so I'm pouring out, I'm manifesting. He said, I'm, he said but once you get what, what I promise you, once you get the thing you've been praying for, you still need to dwell there. You can't come out, watch this, because when you come out and you get lax, that is the, it, you open the door for Satan. You open the door because now your guard is no longer up. You're no longer looking. You're no longer paying attention. You just relax. I done got what I got and I'm just going to enjoy the presence of the Lord. And I'm just going to enjoy what I have. And I'm just going to enjoy it. And I'm just going to do your life. When you live a lifestyle of consecration, you cannot come out of the secret place. So listen, God began to reveal to me and I started to look this up and dissect it. And, and I began to look at the secret place. Listen, the secret place. Is considered the an intimate, isn't this an intimate relationship between a person and God? It's all about relationship. Where you commune with God, hear his voice, and you are refreshed there. Say that again. The secret place is a place where I commune with God. I talk to him, I hear his voice, and I am refreshed there. What? It is also a place of passionate prayer, intercession, and supplication. That is the secret place. It is where I get my instruction. It is where I hear from God. It is where I sit inside. It is where he downloads his next plan for my life. So I cannot come out of the secret place to do whatever Elizabeth wants to do. Listen, this is going to be, this is going to bless y'all today. The, it says, you, God began to tell me, he says, daughter, you must dwell in, can y'all just drop that in the chat? You must dwell there. You must dwell there. It is not a place, watch this, for visitation. Hulu. It is not a place of visitation. When I visit someone, I just stop by. When I visit someone, I got to call first. I got to make sure it's okay for me to come and, 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 and then I can go by. But when I dwell there, I'll make this as plain as I can. When my do, okay, I'll, I'll give you a good example. When my daughters, I, put, I use Whitney. When she came, when she come in town, when she would come in town, she was visiting. She had to let me know she was coming. I had to make sure things were in order. I, I, I had to make sure that she was good. I had to make sure everything was in place when she visited. Watch this. Greetings from Pakistan. Listen, so I had to make sure that things were in place when she visited. But the moment she says, mama, I'm coming home. I'm not leaving. Listen to these words. The, the minute I come home, I'm not leaving. I had to understand that now she dwells here. Now she dwells here. Listen to this. So because she dwells here, everything is she has her own room. We knock on her door before we enter her room. She has her things in place in her room. Her room is her private place. So this is the same thing with God. We do not have visitation with him. Meaning I only come to him when I want something. Meaning God, I need you now. God, I got to let you. Know. Because, but, but when I dwell there. When I dwell there, that means we're, we're constantly talking. So he know what's going on. I don't have to check. And I, t I tell you like this with my daughter. When my daughter w was in the military and she was out of town, my phone was always on. I never turned my phone off. Never, ever, ever. Because I didn't know when she was going to call. I didn't know when she was going to need me. I didn't know when, when she might get in some trouble. So my phone was always on. But now that she dwells here, <laughs> oh God, I can turn my phone off. 
Why? Because I know what she need. I know what she going through. I know what she dealing with. She's right here in the house. I don't. Mm. Do y'all hear Holy Spirit? When you dwell in the secret place with him, meaning you have communion with him, you have relationship with him. Y'all talk together. He talks to you. He gives you the blueprint for your life. You don't have to, you, you don't have to visit him. Listen, when, when you dwell in the secret place, there are benefits. There are benefits that Whitney gets now that she dwells here that she did not get when she was on the road. Whew. Because she dwells here. Watch this. She gets mama's home cooking. Because she dwells here, she don't have to ask me for certain things. I watch her. I know what she needs. Hmm. Do y'all hear Holy Spirit this morning? When I dwell in that secret place with God, he already knows what I need. When I dwell in the secret place with God, I don't have to be. When I dwell in the secret place with God, he knows my heart. Watch this. Let, let us, let's, get in, let's get into this text this morning. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. It says, let's this. Whew. My God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, under the shadow. Oh, this is good this morning. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers. Oh God, listen, this is, these are the benefits. It's benefits when you dwell. Listen. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. God, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand, listen to this, a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Oh God, it shall not come near you. Listen, it says, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, my habitation. Whew. My hab listen, my habitation, meaning I live there. I dwell there. It is my habitat. That means everything that is there in the secret, in the secret place is conducive for me to survive. For me to survive. Whew. It is my habitation. I live there. I don't come out. It is where I live. It is where I move and have my being. It is the very breath that I breathe. Everything that I have there is will allow me to survive. If I come out of my habitat, oh God, I won't live. Listen, it says, there shall no, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, my home. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon a lion and an adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under their feet. <sighs> because I dwell there, I have power to tread. Mm, because I dwell there, I'm not scared. <laughs> Listen, no matter what happens, because I dwell in a secret place. I'm not scared. Listen. It says, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him? I will set him on high. Because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me. What is the Lord saying? You gonna call upon me. I'm gonna answer. Because we have relationship. Because you dwell in the secret place. Whew. Listen. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and I will honor you. Watch this. Verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. <sighs> to dwell means to abide. Mm. Dwelling in the secret place of the most high refers to God revealing to you by his spirit, whatever you need at any given moment. When I dwell there, God reveals the blueprint for my life. When I dwell there, Everything that I need is in that place. Whatever you need, go in the secret place. Whew. Could it be 
What I'm asking God for, I have not obtained it yet because I have not gotten to the secret place. Could it be what I'm believing God for, I have not gotten it yet because I'm just always visiting him. I'm stopping by to see, God, what you got for me now? I'm stopping by to see what I can get from God. But because I dwell there, he already know what I need. Watch it. Listen, it says, Dwelling in the secret place of most high refers to God revealing to you by his spirit whatever you need to know at any given moment. I don't have to tap in. I dwell there. I don't have to say, let me go. Let, let me step out a minute and go. I dwell there. Watch this. Abide under the shadow of the almighty means that you are covered. Watch this. Covered by the might, by the mighty hand of God. I'm covered by his presence. Because I dwell there. Wherever I go, he's there. Who Do you hear him this morning? When one is dwelling in God and covered by God, watch, listen to this. Success, prosperity, blessing, and victory belongs to you. When I'm covered by God, <laughs> Lord, I love you this morning. Success, is mine. Prosperity is mine. Blessing is mine. And victory is mine. Because I dwell there, I constantly walk in victory. I don't know no defeat. Can I, I just keep losing. I don't know no defeat. Mm -mm. Because I dwell there. Am I going to go through? Absolutely. Am I going to deal with issues of life? Absolutely. But because I dwell there, my outcome will always be victory. Listen, he knows the plans that I take. His plans and his purposes, they shall prevail because I dwell in him. I know that everything that I go through is going to work out for my good. May not feel good. Oh God, may not feel good. But because I'm in his presence constantly, he covers me. I walk with him. I talk with him. He shows me that I'm his own because I am there. Victory is always going to be the outcome. Listen, I don't know defeat because I walk and dwell in him. Listen, it says abiding under the shadow of the almighty means you're covered by the mighty hand of God and by his presence. When I'm dwelling in God and covered by God, I'm going to say this again, success, prosperity, blessing, and victory is mine. I dwell there. This is why, this is why, watch this. Everything that I set out to do, mm, I'm going to help y'all. This, this is good to me. Why is it, Dr. Three, it seems like everything that you plan, everything that you set out to do, everything that, 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 that you do, it's, it's just blessed. God just show up. He just do what he do. He just, because I dwell in him. Watch this. Because I dwell in him. So what, when I'm dwelling in him, he's downloading to me his plan. Because I'm dwelling in him. He's downloading to me how to do it, when to do it, what to do, who to use. He's down because I dwell there and his plans and his purposes, they're going to prevail. So because I'm dwelling there, he's downloading to me what his plan is. He's not going to let his plan fail. Ooh, could it be all these ideas that you have? <laughs> Did you get them from the secret place or was it from your flip? I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. All these plans that you have, all these businesses, all these ideas that you have. Is it a God idea or is it a good idea? Is it an idea that you got from the secret place? Or was it something that your flesh just told you? Let's just go on and try it because cause, cause Sally, she tried it and it worked. I'm going to do what Sally did, but I'm going to put my own twist on. Is it a God idea? Did you get it from the secret place? What? Because I, I, I started realizing, I said, wait a minute. If I just do everything that God is telling me to do, it's going to work. Because he's not going to tell me to do something and then let it fail. If God tells me to do something, whew, he's going to give me the vision and the provision. Listen, he's going to give me the vision and the provision. To help it to come to pass. Watch this. It says. Listen. 
He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, God has a secret place for his own, his chosen, his elect. Watch this. He says, I have a place that you must dwell in where I can download your next move. I have a place where you can dwell in where I will download my will to you. Psalm 27 and 5, Psalm 31 and 20, and we in Psalm 91. It says, it is a place to live. Listen, to live in. Those who dwell there abide under the shadow. Woo. I'm going to deal with this shadow. Watch this. Those who dwell there abide under the shadow of the Almighty, knowing, watch this, because I, if I am in somebody's shadow, in your shadow, I have to be awfully close to you. Do you notice how close, if you're walking and the sun is out and you see your shadow, for somebody to step in your shadow, they're literally on your heels. When he says abide under the shadow, that means I am so close to God, I feel it. I am so close to God, I sense him. I am so close to God, if he whispers, I hear him. Who abide under the shadow. It says, it says, listen. He is my refuge and my fortress. Who God. Listen to all these benefits. He is my refuge and my fortress. The one who lives intimately with God knows the greatness of his protection. The Lord is my shepherd. Protection. Watch this. God himself becomes like a mighty refuge and a fortress for the person that dwells there. Listen to this. A refuge. I got a shield around him. I got a hedge of protection around him. Nothing shall come nigh thee. Nothing shall befall thee. If your enemy come, they gonna fall by your right side. Listen, they gonna come, but they not, they won't prevail. Weapons will form, but they won't prosper. That is for, that is for the people that dwell there. We quoting it, but it don't apply if you not dwell. This is what weapon form, but it won't prosper. Baby, you ain't been in God's presence since that don't apply to you. Can I can I just can I because y'all know I'm straight Bible. Listen, certain scriptures that we quoting don't really apply unless we're doing there are prerequisites to this thing. Listen, certain scriptures don't apply to you if you're not living. If you're not living what the book says, if you're not dwelling there, that does not apply to you. The weapon may form, but honey, it won't prosper. Really? Because when I'm reading Psalm 91, it says these are the benefits of the people that dwell there. These are the people that's in the secret place. Not the people that's visiting because they just got in trouble. And now I need God. I'm just visiting because now I'm going through something. So I'm a fast. So God is show this. This is for the people that dwell. We, we, we have certain. Can y'all just drop that in the chat? I have benefits. I have benefits because I, listen, because I made a choice that this is where I want to live. I made a choice that this is where I want to dwell. I made a choice that I will, that I will submit myself to the spirit of God and not my flesh. I have benefits to this thing. My benefits is the weapon will be formed, but it won't prosper. The benefits, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them. Oh, I may be afflicted. But I will be delivered. It's my benefit. Because I dwell there. I don't just visit. I don't just stop by. I don't just get in my feelings. Because God didn't come when I wanted him. And, and, and I didn't get what I wanted. Mm -mm. I dwell there. When I dwell there means. Watch this. Watch this. Because I dwell there. When I don't get what I want. I don't get the attitude. Mm. When I dwell there. When I've been praying and praying and praying and fast and fast and I came through the fast and I didn't get it that, because I dwell that I don't get mad at God. Well, I ain't even fast no more. Well, I ain't even, when I dwell that I don't have time to come out of my secret place to allow this flesh to do what it want to do. When I dwell there, listen, when it don't, this is the mindset of a person who dwells in the secret place. When it didn't happen, when I thought it was going to happen, when I didn't get what I thought I was going to get, I got about 3.5 seconds to be upset. Listen, I got seconds to be upset. Then I got to get myself together. I got to remind myself what the Lord said. 
I got to remind myself that his promises are yea and amen. I got to remind myself that heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word, his word, his word shall forever stay because I dwell there. I don't stay in my feelings too long. Mm, listen, says, whew, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Listen, this close relationship with God and all the benefits that come from it are for those who know him as God and they truly trust him. Mm. Do you really trust him? Listen, kicker. Do you trust him when he stops speaking? Ooh, God have mercy. Do you trust him when you don't even see the results? Mm. Do you trust him when you done got all the prophecies, God gonna do X, Y, Z, and you don't see none of it? In fact, everything is going contrary. Do you trust him then? Because what I've learned, listen, in all the years that I've been saved, what I've learned, because I've been the one to fast and pray and believe God and then it didn't come when I thought it was going to come. And I was like, man, come on, God. And, and it didn't come when I thought. But I have learned, watch this, that when I'm trust, truly trusting God, listen, truly trusting God, I can't get in my feelings. I can't let this flesh kick in. And I realize that when I'm really trust, when I'm truly trusting God, and it's taking longer than I, Elizabeth, thought, mm, because we know He is the slowest on time God. When, when I'm when I'm waiting on God, patiently waiting, not complaining and waiting, not woe is me and, and, and waiting, not, not telling everybody about it and waiting. But when I'm patiently waiting on God, I mean, I'm still, I'm going to keep fasting. I'm going to keep trusting because God, you said it. God, I wrote it on sticky notes. It's all, I got, I got it everywhere in my, in my house. I got declarations. I know what you said. When I'm truly waiting on God and he does not come when I think he should come. Testimony time. No test, no testimony. Listen, so I've learned that when I was sick in my body for years, surgery after surgery after surgery, after nine surgeries, nothing related, sickness is not connected. I say, God, you birthing something. I don't understand what you're doing. I know your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. I, I don't understand, but I trust you in this. I trust that you're birthing something in me. <laughs> oh, God. You're, 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 you're birthing something in me. It's something you want to do with me. It's something you need to, it's something you carry me to. So I got to go through this process. It always ain't about me. It's about somebody else. So I got to go through this process. So when my sons, my daughters, my, 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 my mentees, my, my, my members, when they go through this stuff, I'll be able to show them how you come out. Hmm. But who really want to go through? Watch this. Because we are birthed to be selfish people. Mm. Why I got to go through that for somebody else? God, can you pick somebody else? I'm tired. This is the stuff we say. I'm tired of going through. All right. So you don't want to go through, which means you don't want him to get the glory. <laughs> you don't want to go through. So you don't want to be processed. Watch this. I don't want to go through this. I don't want to be the one to slay this generational curse. So I'm going to allow my daughters to have to deal with it. Ooh. So I'm going to have to let my children deal with it. Because I ain't strong enough, God. That's what you're saying when you say get somebody else. Put it on my grandchildren. Because grandmama wasn't strong enough to go through it. Oh, God have mercy. When I'm saying, God, I don't trust you, I want out. I don't trust this, what you got. I want out. I want my way. I want what I want right now. Whew. So what you're really saying is, I'm not going to deal with this generational curse. This is going to have to just keep going. Because, Lord, I'm tired. Let, let my children deal with it. Whew. Ooh, Jesus. When the Bible says, every generation is weaker, but wiser. Wiser in things, wiser in how to get it, wiser in technology. But when it comes to the spiritual things, they are weaker. So what I'm saying is give it to them. Maybe they'll deal with it better than me. Listen, my God in him will I trust. This relationship comes with benefits. Listen, with benefits for those who truly trust him. Listen, it says surely, here come another benefit. He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. 
Ooh, this is good right here. He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Listen, the psalmist David describes the specific ways God protects and cares for his people. Beginning with the rescue. Listen, I'm going to say it again. He will deliver you from the fowler. What does that mean? He will rescue you from those who try to trap you. I don't know how I got tricked into that because you ain't in a secret place. I don't know how they talk me into that because you ain't in a secret place. I don't know how why I keep doing it because you ain't in a secret place. Let's just be real this morning. Can you say I need to dwell there? Because I'm that way I'm not tricked. What did God say in the, in the beginning of 20? Was this 24? The chief demonic spirits would be confusion and deception. But, it, but because I dwell there, I'm not tricked nor am I deceived. Because I dwell in the secret place. When I'm in a secret place, Holy Spirit reveals. Not just what you need, but what you need to stay away from. Not just what you need, but who you need to disconnect from. Listen, the fowler works in secret. Who? It ain't gonna be it ain't gonna be just right there, so I just see it. The fowler speaks of people that work in secret behind your back around you just to get from you Whew. listen the fowler works in secret watch this the fowler will change his trap and his method Whew. same devil keep going through the same cycle keep dealing with the same thing fowler they work in secret they will change their trap and their method the fowler often entices watch this with pleasure or profit. The fowler comes. Here, here, take this. Here, here's the easy way to do it. Here, I can help you, girl. And they getting, I don't know who this is for. And they're getting your ideals the whole time. They say they working with you. Fowler. That they say they helping you. Fowler. This is why, we, because I remain in the secret place, he reveals to me. Who needs to be on the team? Because I remain in the secret place, he reveals to me. This is who you need to partner with. When, because, I because I remain in the secret place, he reveals to me. This is who you need to sow into. Because I, re because I remain in the secret place, he will tell you when to sow, how to sow, how much to sow, where to go. Wh because I remain there. I'm not tricked. Whew. Watch this. It says, the fowler often uses a bad example. Girl, watch this. This is how they did it over here. Bad example. The fowler, bad example. You need to follow them. Bad example. The fowler, they sneaky. Setting you up the whole time. And you just, eh, nah, 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 nah. cause you ain't even in the secret place. So God can't download nothing when, when you got so many voices in your ear till you can't no longer hear him. You got so many voices in your ear. You eating from everybody's table. So when God starts speaking, you don't even know if it's him or not. The fowler. Girl, let's go. Let's go over here. Girl, let's go over there. Girl, this right here is a motivational speaker. So you don't know if it's motivational. You don't know if it's spiritual. You don't know if it's God. You don't know if it's Satan. You don't know. Because the fowler is in your ear. Too many voices. Listen, it says... Not only will he protect you from the fowler, it says, but he will also protect you from the perilous pestilence. Listen, God also protects his people in times of plague and disease. God protects his people in times of plague and disease. Listen, the psalmist inspired by the Holy Spirit did not intend this as an absolute promise that every believer would be delivered from everything that comes their way. Watch this because I don't want y'all to get it twisted. Well, I know somebody and they got COVID and they died. That is not what it's saying. Watch this. It says this idea is that the psalmist could point to many times when God did just deliver him from pessimists. He can, he can look back at God's track record and he's saying, oh, he will deliver me from the pessimists. Oh, he will deliver me from, from, the, from the plague. He will deliver me. From all the things that came, the psalmist could look back 
when he brought the children out of Egypt, out of Israel, when he brought the children out of Egypt, and they began to see all the pestilence, all the plagues, it didn't come near them. Remember, they put the blood over their doorposts, and blood and, and, and death passed by. They looked back. Didn't say they were never gonna go through nothing. Didn't say some of them would, would die. Didn't say they would. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. Those that dwell in the secret place. Listen, the weapons gonna be formed. Don't mean they gonna prosper. He will protect you if you dwell there. I can look back. Watch this. I can look back over my life at all the things that happened in the world and I'm still here. He protected you. Whew. Watch this. I can look back over my life and when death was passing by, I can, can I testify? I can think back when I was in the hospital and I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw death. I smelled death has a smell. See, some of y'all don't. Y'all think the prophetic is just about me prophesying to you that God going to do this. He going to do X. He going to do Y. He going to do Z. And if you just do this, I, death has a smell. I woke up in the hospital and, and, and I smelled it first. And I opened my eyes and I saw it walking. Mm. And, and God, listen, and, and, and I saw death walking. Mm, God, and, and, and this, this is the time I had went in the hospital for, for something simple. This wasn't even a major surgery. And, and, and I woke up and I start, I said, oh, death, stand still. Nah, it's not my time. I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. My time is, and I begin to pray and I begin to pray in the spirit and watch this. And then later on, I heard them saying codes, codes was going off all over the intercom. Doctors and nurses running. I said, mm-hmm, death, stand still. Not in this room. Not in this room. Not in this room. Why? So you have to understand when you are protected, meaning I can look back, though there be pestilence, though there be death, though there be plague, I can look back over my life and I see God's track record with me. Who God? Who God? Listen, listen, I, 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 I can recall it. It's like when I think about it, I can see it so vividly. I can see the, the nurse had just left taking my vitals. In fact, I had went, this is the time I went in the hospital for, for something and I ended up having to have a, a total hysterectomy. I was in my thirties and, and I remember laying there and the nurse had just checked my body. Everything was good. She left out and I went back to sleep. And then all of a sudden I smelt it hmm. Hmm. and I woke up and I began to start praying and I began to start quoting scriptures over my life. And then next thing I know that that spirit left. And then about not even five minutes later, cold blue, cold blue. I was in, I was in CMC in Pineville. Whew. Listen, but death had to stand still. Why? Because I abide there. I dwell in the secret place. Watch this. It said, so he will protect you from the pestilence. And, and it says, and he will cover you with his feathers. Listen. That, that that's a metaphor for God being like a bird sheltering his chicks. Oh God, he's covering you with his wings. So nothing shall hurt you. Nothing shall harm you. Nothing shall come nigh thee. It says his truth shall be his truth. His truth, not yours. <laughs> Can y'all just drop that in the chat? His truth, <clears throat> his truth shall be your shield and buckler. Listen, this picture of God's protection continues when with his truth representing a smaller often round. He said his truth is like a shield all around you. <sighs> Listen, his truth is all around you, protecting you. Listen, shield and buckler means, watch this, double armor. It says he has two shields, double, protecting you. Listen, his shield and his buckler shall be, shall protect you. Listen, and it says, watch this, verses five through six, and you will not be afraid. Uh-oh, many of us operate in fear, live in fear. I'm scared. What if this and what if that and what if this and what? Do you know, do you know you can be so fearful to it causes a spirit? I rebuke the spirit of anxiety. Mm. I rebuke the spirit of anxiety because you can be so fearful that ain't the spirit of anxiety step in and when you have the spirit of anxiety watch this been there done that been delivered from it watch this 
when you have the spirit of anxiety, it will keep you stagnant and you won't move forward because you're so afraid of the what ifs. What if it don't work? What if I don't get cured? What if I die with it? What if it spread? What if it come back? What if it go here? What if this happened? And, and you, that's a constant in your mind. Watch this. And because that's a constant in your mind, you start speaking it out of your mouth. And what you speak out of your mouth is life and death. And when you were operating in fear and when you operate in anxiety, you are actually speaking death. Watch this. Says, you shall not be afraid because you dwell in the secret place. Listen. People tell me, they say, you just be so, when you get up there, it's just like it's just natural to you. I ain't never scared because I dwell. Watch this. When you dwell in the secret place, when you dwell in the secret place, you don't have an I'm not arrogant about it. Let me let me say this. I'm not arrogant. It's just that I know God said what he said. <laughs> I'm not arrogant. I'm, I'm not arrogant. I'm not going to argue with you. We ain't going to debate about the word of God. God's word is true. God's words will stand. I'm not going to argue with you about that. But what I will do is walk in the full authority that he has given me. Why? Because I'm walking in the, in the peace of God. I'm walking in the word of God. I'm walking in what he downloaded for me, to me, in the secret place. So I operate based on what he showed me in the secret place. I already know it's not going to fail. Whew. What? I already know it's going to work. How you know? Because God revealed it to me in the secret place. It's not even what I want to do. It's what he want to do. Whew. He downloaded. I walk in a confidence and an authority in God. Whew. Watch this. It says, you shall not be afraid when you dwell in the secret place. Having God as a shelter and a refuge gives you strength. Watch this. Say this again. Having God as my shelter and my refuge gives me strength and courage. In life, God may permit many. Listen, God will allow certain things to happen to you. Y'all do know about Job, right? We all want to talk about Job. Everybody know about Job. Old oh, Job went through. Well, okay, and then he put the, the boys in the fiery furnace. Oh, then he put Daniel in the lions. Then, oh, and then he, he allowed those things. Listen. And he said, I will allow those things, but I will give you a way of escape. I will allow those things, but my plans and purposes are going to prevail. I will allow those things, but it won't prosper. I will allow those things because you're going to get the victory, but I'm going to get the glory. I will allow those things because I'm going to use it later for a testimony. It says, you do know how, how it went down with Job. There was a meeting. Can I paraphrase this? There was a meeting in the courtroom of heaven. Satan was invited. God offered Job up. Have you considered Job? Since you out Satan, you trying to get everybody else? Try my boy Job. And what did Satan say? What, what did Satan say? Uh-uh, because you got a hedge of protection around him. Watch this. No, I ain't even going to try Job because you got a hedge of protection around him. God says, well, I'm going to remove it. You can touch everything, but you can't kill him. I give you full permission, Satan. <laughs> oh, God. To do everything you need to do to Job. But you will not be able to take his life. That's the only thing you can't do. Satan was like, it's on and popping now. Watch this. But God knew Job's heart. Who? Could it be you being tried? Mm. Could it be you're being tested? Because God knows your heart. God has more faith in you than you got in him. God is saying, Sabrina, ain't gonna, she ain't going to turn on me. Go and try her. Go and allow that stuff that go on Satan. That's my girl right there. Geneva ain't mm -mm, that's my girl. She ain't gonna uh-uh. That one right there, that's my girl. Go on and try her. Go on and try Sheila. She ain't gonna turn on me. We, we, we got we, we got relationship. Sheila dwells in the secret place. So even though you trying her, she's still talking to me. Even though you testing her, even though you're taking everything she got, she's still talking to me. Whew. Because, because, watch this, because she know, because Brenda know, she dwells in a secret place. I'm revealing to her, this stuff is right, right here is about to, about to happen. This is about to jump off, but I need you to get ready. I'm going to put you on a fast first. So even though you're going through this, you'll never look like what you're going through. Even though you're dealing with this and you feel like you're going to lose your mind, I got your mind. He said, even though you're there, I'm with you. You're in the secret place. We're in this thing together. 
We're going to prove a point. <laughs> God. We are going to prove a point with your life. That I am God. Oh, Jesus. That I am God. Listen, it says, it says, so you're never afraid to go through while you're in the secret place. Oh, God, I love you. I love you. I love you. It says, God's children know that no power is out of God's control. We realize. We realize because we dwell there that anything that happens, God is allowing it. And if God is allowing this, baby, it's going to work for my good. It may hurt right now. I may be shedding tears right now. But this thing going to work for my good. In the end, I'm going to win. I understand, Lord, that if God tell me no right now, he got something better. If God tell me no right now, that thing, what I, what I was desiring, it ain't for me. I thought it was. But God knows me. He knows the number of hairs on my head. He know what I need. He know what I need, when I need it, how I need it. Because he's a sovereign God. So I know that his no is my protection. Mm. His delay is not his denial. His delay is I got something better down the road. Don't settle. If, if, if you get this right here, Dr. Three, you're settling. If you get this right here, this ain't what you need. This right here going to satisfy your flesh, but it ain't going to get you to your destiny. That's why we must remain in the secret place. Then it says, then it says, let, let me keep going. It says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Watch this. This means destruction can come in the daytime or in the nighttime or in the noonday. It could come as a terror or by arrow. Whoa, God. It can come, listen, by a terror or an arrow. Whoa, watch this. As a pestilence or as a destruction. Watch this. Whenever or however it come, God is saying, I'm going to defend you. No matter how it come, if it come in the broad daylight, you saw it coming, I'm going to protect you. If it came in the night and you were asleep and you didn't even know, he said, I'm going to protect you. <laughs> if it come to make you sick, I'm going to protect you. If it come to destroy you, I'm going to protect you. No matter how it come, I got you. Can y'all please just drop that in the chat? No matter how it comes. God got me. Who God, that ought to make somebody shout right there. No matter how it comes, God got me. Listen, it says, it says, a thousand, listen, he said, he said he said, this is how, this is how much I got you. A thousand may fall at your side. God's protection and care could be so specifically focused that it can preserve one in 10,000. It's a thousand. Can fall by your right side. What does that mean? A thousand people around me can die. But not me. Who? Listen, listen, listen. It says. God will preserve you. If you one in, in 10,000. If you're one in 10,000. He said, but wait a minute. I see Barbara right there. I got to protect her. I see Jay right there. I got to protect him. I see Viv and James right there. I got to protect them. All these other people, you could be the one in 10,000. He said, but that's my girl. That's my boy. I got, I got to protect them. Listen, it says, it says, listen, it says, it says, who God? It says, see, it says a thousand may fall at your side. See the reward of the wicked. He said, I will allow you to see it. Listen, listen, in contrast to the protection of his chosen, God has also appointed a reward for the wicked. Well, I wonder what they, God said, oh, I'm going to deal with them. Don't you worry about that. Whew. I'm going to deal with the wicked. I'm going to deal with those that's shooting the arrows. I'm going to deal with those that's causing the destruction. He said, don't worry about that. I got them. Listen, it says, I need my people to always look at the truth. What did God say? Whew. My answer is always going to be, what did God say? What does the Bible say? He is the God of the Bible. He's still parting red seas. That's why when I go to doctor's appointments and they start talking crazy, I say, okay, mm -hmm. that's your, that's your opinion. Okay. And I let them know, I understand what you're saying. I will take the medication. I said, but, but I'm going to stand on what God told me. I am healed. I decree and I declare, I shall start this medicine, but this medicine won't be a part of my everyday life. It is for sick. Okay. Let me stay right here. It says. 
Listen, in, in, in here, oh God, listen, this is good to me. Verses 19 through 30, he repeats the promise of deliverance and assurance for victory. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. Psalm 91, 10 through 16. It says, it is talking about those who trust in the Lord, making him their dwelling place. Their source of life and satisfaction. To dwell there is where I get my strength. To dwell there is where I get my peace. Because I dwell there. Any decision that I make, I don't talk to my daughters with first. I don't talk to my team first. I talk to God first. Whew. Who are you running to as soon as a problem come? Who are you running to as soon as you get a little idea? Let me go see what my girls think. Uh-uh. Let me see what God think. Let me make sure this is a God idea Whew. and not a flesh idea. Let me make sure that this is in the will of God for my life. Let me make sure that this is in divine alignment. Consult him regarding everything. Whew. Listen, it says no evil. Here's another benefit. No evil shall befall you, nor shall plague come near your dwelling. Listen, one of the theologians wrote, one who really dwells and does not merely appear to dwell. This is for you. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. All these promises, Karen, watch this. All of these promises are for those that really dwell there. We're not just stopping by to visit. Mm -mm, I live there. This is my home. This is where I, this is my habitation. This is where I get my source. This is where I get my peace. This is where I get my joy. I live there. I'm not just stopping by. I'm not just going over there to see, well, let me see what God going to say about this. Now, you ain't talked to him in, 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 in 10 months, but because trouble came, here I come. And I'm not saying that when trouble come, don't run to him. Absolutely. But when you run to him, can you stay? Oh, God. Can you stay there? Can you abide there? And not just visit him. Oh, God. Because God keeps saying, I am not your genie in a bottle. You are not going to run to me every time you get in trouble. And then you, you get what you need from me. And then you gone. You get what you need. I provided. I did all this. And now you gone. You're not going to keep using me like that. Okay. Let me say. Let me. I'm going to stay right here. It says. The theologian said. These promises are for the people who really dwell there. And don't just appear to dwell there. You just look holy on Sunday. You just look holy on, on, on Friday nights. But, but Monday through Thursday, you, you doing whatever you want to do. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It says they live there. They dwell there. It says, listen, for he shall give his angels charge over you because you dwell there. Angels charge over me because I dwell there. Listen, this is the way he sent his protection and care to his people who dwell there. Through his angels. Listen, he says, charge that mean God command them. To keep you and to bear you up. To be your buckler, to be your shield, to be there with you. To help you, to lead you, to guide you, to block things. To be your holy messengers. To send people. Listen, do you know you are assigned angels that would get a message to somebody for you? And you just show up and they're like, I was waiting on you. I was just thinking about you. He gives his angels charge over you. And not only that, he said, but when you dwell there, he said, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The protection of God to his people extends beyond general deliverance from harm. It also speaks of general granting of victory. Victory to his people, even over opponents that are stronger than you. Whoop. When he says, I will give you power to tread, that means over demonic spirits that are really stronger than you, bigger than you. That means over people that have more power than you. Mm -hmm. That means over people that's trying to set them traps that you don't know about. He said, I'm going to give you power to tread. Don't even worry about that. <sighs> Listen. When I tread on something, I step on it. When I tread on it, it is under my feet. When I tread on it, it don't harm me. 
When I tread, I got victory. <sighs> when I tread, I got victory. When I tread, listen, when I tread, Renee, I have victory. That means I don't know defeat. When it looked like I'm losing, I'm really winning. You may think I'm losing, but I ain't losing. I'm winning. Because on the other side of this is victory. <sighs> listen, it says, God's promise to and blessing over the one who loves him. Because he has set his love upon me, God speaks specifically over those who set their love upon him. He has set his love on me. To set one's love upon God means to do it by choice. Make a choice. Make a, when it comes to God, everything is a choice. He's not going to make you do nothing. Everything is a choice. What it says, it says, he does not, it says, when I set my love upon God, I do not wait for a feeling of love to come, but simply, I simply choose to think and act toward God. I don't wait for how I feel. I just do. Whoop. Get out your feelings. Stop, stop being so emotional. I don't wait for a feeling. I make a choice. This is how we going to feel. This is what we going to do. As for me and my house, listen, this is what we going to do. It says, that means when I make a choice, I spend time with God. I listen to God. I read what he has written to me. I speak to God. I think of God, watch this, in unoccupied moments. What do you mean, Dr. Three? I speak to God in unoccupied moments, not when I'm busy. Not when I'm doing so, not when I'm looking at TV, not when I'm just doing... I make it a point to right now, there's nothing on my schedule. This is God's time. Who unoccupied times. Listen, it says, I adore God. I speak to, I speak to others about my God. Some people don't even know you saved. Ooh, I know, I know I struck a nerve. Some people don't, you go to church? Really? When they start that, that ought to tell you, you better check yourself. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Okay, but they don't even know you go to church. Because I'm looking at your Facebook page and I'm confused. I'm looking at your Instagram and I'm confused. I'm looking at your TikToks you posted and I'm confused. I'm looking at the way you dress and I'm confused. You go to church? <sighs> Listen, I will speak to him. I will speak to others about God. And I will give to God, making glad sacrifices to him and for him. Listen. And he says, therefore, I will deliver him. God will protect his beloved and set him on high and do it. Why is God doing this? Because I have a relationship with him. Why is God doing this? Because I know his name and I have a real relationship with him. And he says he will set me on high. What does that mean? When God says I will set you on high. Watch this. That means, listen, he will set you out of reach of your enemies. He will set you out of reach of your enemies. Mm. And it says, there are blessings that some believers miss out on simply because they are always fretting anxiety. And you do not truly trust God as you should. Worrying. You can't have faith and worry. You can't have faith and fear. Listen. When I trust God, he set me out of reach of my enemies. Oh, they're going to try to get to me, but they can't. They're going to try to take me out of my rightful place, but they can't. Didn't say they wasn't going to try. No weapon formed against you. Didn't say they're going to try. Satan is on his job 24 hours, seven days a week, and he waiting for you to come out of the secret place so he can go to work. Satan already know when you're in that secret place, ain't nothing he can do. Whew. Satan already know. Oh, she in that place? Okay. Hmm. Soon as you say, I ain't going to fast today, girl, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to just chill. He said, got her. Here come the phone calls. Here come the texts. Here come. The, just go out with mama. Just go. Mama, just, here come all that. As soon as you step out of the secret place, watch this. It says, it says, it says he, you can call upon God and he will answer. God promises to answer the prayer of the one who loves him and who genuinely knows him. He said, I will answer their prayers. I ever live it to make intercession for them. When they don't know what to pray, I'll talk to my father for them. It says, listen, and I will be with them. 
Listen, this is personal. This is a personal and a wonderful blessing that God's give that God gives to those that dwell in the secret place. Listen, a blessing of his presence means I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you. I will honor you. And with long life, I will satisfy you. Mm. Listen to these closing blessings. I will be with you in trouble. I'm going to deliver you every time. I'm going to honor you. Listen, and with long life, I'm going to satisfy you. The blessings of God make it the rich and add no sorrow. That part. Those with the those that dwell there. Long life. And it says, the blessing of his preservation, and he will show you salvation. I'll save you every time. I get you out every time. But you must dwell there. You must dwell there. Listen, listen. Listen. You must dwell there. Listen. I'm going to close with this warning. Can y'all just drop in the chat? Warning. Warning, warning, Deuteronomy 8, warning, warning, here we go. So we already know that we have all these benefits if we just stay in that secret place with God. Watch this. If we just stay in the secret place with God, we have all of these blessings. We have all of these benefits. But listen to Deuteronomy 8, 10 through 20. After you get what you've been praying for, after you get what you've been believing God for. After you get what you've been fasting for. Here we go. Watch this. Deuteronomy 8, 10 through 20. When you have eaten and you are satisfied. I mean, you got what you were praying for. Praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. So after you get it, give him praise. Give him glory. All honor belongs to God. Do that, right? Okay, we got that. Verse 11. Be careful. Verse 11. Watch this. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees. Listen, verse 12. Otherwise, when you eat and you are satisfied, and when you build your fine houses and you settle down, and when you herd your flocks and all this stuff grow, and you get your silver and gold, and you get increased, and you have been multiplied financially, it says, watch this. After you have gotten all those things that you've been fasting and praying for, watch this. Verse 14. Then your heart will become proud. Mm. Listen how this flip. Then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God. Woo, Jesus. You'll forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. That means whatever you were stuck in, he brought you out. Listen, he brought you out of bondage, slavery. Verse 15. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with snakes and scorpions. When everybody was trying to get at you, God said, I delivered you from that. I brought you out of bondage. I, I made a way for you to become free. Listen, and I blessed you. He says, I even fed you in the wilderness. Verse 16. Listen, he says, he says, I fed you. I gave you manna in the wilderness. Something your ancestors had never known. I've given you more than your ancestors. Your grandmama and them. They ain't never had the stuff you got. He said, but I gave it to you. Watch this. And it says, verse 17. Don't you say to yourself. My power, my strength of my hands have I produced this wealth for me. Verse 18. But here we go again, third time. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to get wealth. And he confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors this day. Verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. Here's the warning. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods, that means... Follow other gods, worship other gods. That means whatever you prayed for and he gave it to you, now you worship it. Woo. You prayed for a husband, he gave you a husband, and now the husband has become your whole life. You don't need to talk to God no more. Uh-oh. You prayed for, you asked for, he gave it to you, and now you don't forget God. Watch this. It says, if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I, God, testify against you. That you will be destroyed. What happened to her? She had she had it going up. She forgot God. Who? What happened to him? He had all this beautiful stuff. This beautiful thing. He forgot God. <laughs> oh God! You you ever see people that they have so much in their life look so great? They look so great, and he says, "Uh huh." And I gave them the desires of their heart, and they forgot me. 
I am a jealous God. Watch this. You don't put no other God before me. So sometimes, and I'm because I'm way over my time. So sometimes that thing you praying for God not going to give it to you because he already know you're going to make that your God. I ain't giving you that. I ain't giving you that. I ain't giving you that. And then it's time we just go out and we just get it ourselves. You know what? I ain't going to worry about it. I'm just going to go on and do it. I deal with the, I deal with the, I deal with the re repercussions later. All right. I deal with the consequences later. All right. And you got what you wanted and look where you at now. You have made that thing your God and you have forgotten the God that gave it to you. You have made that thing your God and you forgot the one, the giver of the gift. Ooh, Jesus. I'm going to tell you something that. Mm, okay, Holy Spirit. Oh, God. I just got to say this. Sometimes. You can be praying and praying, God, use me, God, use me. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this for your kingdom. And God said, okay, here it is. And then that, watch this, that title becomes your God. Woo. You look busy. You look like you're doing a work for a kingdom, but it's really for, I'm trying to build myself a platform, honey. They going to know my name, your name. What about God's name? Woo, Jesus. Because Satan is so conniving. He's so deceptive. He will have you out here thinking you're really doing the work for the Lord when, when, your, when your real motive is, I want to make my name great. Mm. He's sneaky. But because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, watch this, because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we will be protected from the schemes and the plots of the enemy. Listen, we must remain in the secret place of the most high. Can y'all just drop that in the chat? I have to remain in the secret place. I don't have a choice. Whew. I got to remain there. Who God. Some people just want to be. Some people j just want to platform. Some people just want to be famous. I just want to be the next this. And I just want to be the next. This. But what about the people that just really want you to know God? Where they at? Where, where, where the kingdom minded people at? You know how you can find those people when the people that they just want a platform, the people that, that that's just in it for self gain, post something. A hurt dog gonna I'm gonna leave that alone. A hurt, as my grandma would say, a hurt dog gonna holler every time. But when you realize it ain't about me, it's about the kingdom, you move different. You move different. Stuff that you could go tit for tat. you like, you know what? Mm -mm. I'll let my daddy handle that. My daddy can handle that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting ready to entertain that. A hurt dog go holler every time. You could post something random. A hurt dog will holler every time. This is why you have to remain in a secret place so you don't get caught up. You have to remain in a secret place so you stay focused. You have to remain in a secret place, listen, so you can remain kingdom minded. Listen, listen, I got to get off here because I am already super, super late. I got to get off of here. But listen, if you want to sow into the word, the, the information is on the bottom of the screen. I want you to tag that word. Watch this. Secret place. The secret place. The secret place. The secret place. Listen, yo, when you sow, it's going into absolute fertile soil. It's going into miracle soil. Listen, signs, wonders, and miracles follow this ministry. This is the work of the kingdom. That We are about kingdom business over here. Listen, if you want to sow the information on the bottom of the screen, we will gather together again in person on April the 19th. It's about two weeks away, eight days away, eight days away. We will gather together April 19th, 604 Doug Mays Place. Y'all know the location where we will go deeper and higher in the Lord. Listen, I will be back on here next Monday, five, all next week, actually, 5.30 a.m. decreeing and declaring the word of the Lord. Listen, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time out to sit with me and Holy Spirit this morning as we dissect this word. Y'all know I love the word of the Lord. I can keep going and going and going, but I got to get to work. Look, it's back at it. We got about eight weeks to go and I will be done for this school year. Listen, I pray, I pray, I decree and I declare that your day is already blessed. 
I decree and I declare, listen, that the favor of the Lord is following you today. I decree and I declare that you will walk in places your ancestors have never known. I decree and I declare today that the joy of the Lord, it is your strength. Today, you will be in a good mood. Today will be a good day. Today, you will have a good day on purpose. Listen, I love you. That's from my heart. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Have a good day on purpose. And remember, dwell in the secret place.